Uh, one thing that really impressed me is the idea of the middle path to, to look at more balanced view. Uh, these Eastern philosophies teach you to uh, focus, to be patient, uh, to, to look inward, uh, to see some kind of inner peace in what you try to do every day. And that has really impressed me to kind of ad ad adapt that in my day-to-day -day life, to find a nice balance between my professional life and my personal interests. Uh, and that gives you a lot of inner peace and an enjo enjoyment as, as, as you work on your problems, you're looking at a lot of challenges, uh, you're trying to beat certain performance, you want to improve the performance of an algorithm, you're excited, you're working with the students. At the same time, you would like to find this kind of a, uh, a, a kind of a balance, you know, where, where you're balancing your professional life and your personal interests. And I found those philosophies of, of being able to look inward and find some inner peace in what you try to do, and that has been very appealing to me. Yeah, so work that we are doing here is in uh, developing accelerators. Accelerators are technologies by which you speed up computations, you want to accelerate computations. Uh, we are working on a technology called uh, Field Programmable Gate Arrays, FPGAs they are called. Uh, it's a technology that has been around for some time. And our focus has been how to make this technology work faster for you by developing parallel techniques, by developing techniques that work in parallel to accelerate computations. We started almost 25 years ago. Uh, we introduced a model called the Reconfigurable Mesh Model. Uh, it's not a very well-known model in the sense that there are no practical implementations for it. But over the years, the FPGA technology came, uh, so in some sense, it approximates that model. And uh, we, we developed various techniques to be able to take computations, develop application-specific architectures, and get high performance in the process. Victor Persana, I've known since I was a graduate student in the early 1990s. In fact, we shared the same academic advisor. Victor is a pioneer in the area of reconfigurable computing and computer architecture. In the IEEE Computer Society, he founded the Technical Committee on Parallel Processing roughly about 1991, and I served as chair of that technical committee in the early 2000 era. Let's not forget Victor's contributions as a steering committee chair for major conferences and a publications editor-in-chief and editorial board member. He was also founding chair of the Computer Society's Technical Committee on Parallel Processing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Victor Persana. What is surprising to me is uh, when we started, we got dramatic performance improvements. You know, we, we thought that it is something that the whole community is going to be excited and uh, it will be easily adapted. Uh, it has taken almost uh, 25 years for the community to really come around. Uh, there's a lot of developments happening in the community today, but I think it is in some sense becoming a mainstream. That is really something that is exciting. At the same time, what is surprising to me is that uh, uh, we didn't catch on to this technology early on. Uh, there was a lot of potential. Uh, many of us saw it that way, uh, but the mainstream did not see it that way, but I think it is happening. I'm glad that it is changing now. I, th I think there are a lot of uh, uh, dramatic improvements we can get by using this technology. He also founded some of the flagship conferences in parallel and distributed systems in the IEEE Computer Society. The International Parallel and Distributed Processing Symposium, now going into its 30th year, was founded by Victor Persana, and he serves on the steering committee as the co-chair of it, and I also serve on that steering committee as well. Well, I'm very excited. <laughs> when I got the mail from Anne-Marie, Anne-Marie Kelly, it was exciting, it was a pleasant surprise to me. Uh, I, was, I was thrilled to hear about it, you know, I called my department chairman, I told him, look, I got this award, it's this kind of the top award in the community, IEEE Computer Society Award. And uh, it's, 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 I'm really impressed. I've been really happy to hear that the community, the, the selection committee looked at me, uh, looked at this area of research. I think one thing that I would like to make a point here is um, this is kind of a niche area. This is an area around for 25 years. 
I'm really hoping that this recognition of my work over the last 25 years really creates an opportunity for the community to look at this particular space of reconfigurable computing, application-specific acceleration, and we can push this technology further. That's really something that I'm hoping uh, this award kind of signifies to the community to look at this technology, which has been around. Uh, people have worked on it. There's a lot of potential to use this technology, and I'm hoping that uh, we could use this in a, in a positive way to, for the whole community to look at this technology. I'm honored to receive this award. I would like to thank the IEEE Computer Society and also the awards committee for choosing me. I've been involved with Computer Society uh, for the last 25 years, or 25 plus years. In some sense, I feel like I grew with the society. Uh, I started looking at the IPDPS conference 25, 26 years ago in the Los Angeles area. Uh, it's a great organization. Uh, there are many uh, strong leaders, staff, volunteers involved in this. Uh, one thing that I would like to see that happens, uh, that is currently happening, but I would like to see more of it is a global reach, uh, looking at a lot of other countries where computing is evolving, not as much as, as it is in the US. So it is an opportunity for us to reach out to the community, to work with the students. Uh, there are a lot of students in countries like India, China, Korea, who are really, really getting into computer science, computer engineering. Uh, we should make sure that they are, uh, they are involved with the computer society, uh, we need those volunteers to be involved in the society. Uh, I, th I think we should continue to reach out to all these communities and make sure that uh, IEEE Computer Society is the brand, it is the place where they go to for the professional development in the community. Victor really has been instrumental on engaging for the people. He has taken all of his capabilities and rather than looking at himself has looked at how to better the community and how to better, better others. I'm very pleased to call Prasanna a friend of mine and to be able to talk about his contributions to the IEEE Computer Society and to the computing profession as a whole. Thank you again. Uh, one advice I would like to give to uh, the, the newer generation of researchers is uh, uh, look at the areas at the, at the interface between what exactly you might be doing in your community. For example, you may be a hardware person. Uh, try to see the advances from the other side also from a software perspective or from an architecture perspective or from an algorithm design perspective. If you cross these boundaries, there are some very interesting problems to solve. And that is the philosophy of my research over the last 25 years. I know that we stay in our own communities, we, we are excited in what we are doing, but if we were to step out a little bit outside of our community and see our problems from the larger perspective, I think we can do many interesting things, many useful things, many challenging things to work at that point. I think that is really a lot of interesting research can be done.